Germany, a country divided. Hi, I'm Max Bolke, and I'll be talking to you guys today about the Eastern German culture. So now, just some quick things that you do need to know before we go into the Eastern side of Germany and their culture. Before there ever was two sides, Western and Eastern Germany, there was a war actually brewing between us and Russia. This was what actually became to be known as the Cold War. Once this happened, actually, the battlegrounds mostly happened in Germany. And the reason why we call it Eastern and Western Germany is because the Berlin Wall actually went up, not perfectly separating East and West, but that's what the labels were and that's what labels they used at the time. Now, the Western side was affected as much as the war would affect anyone, but the Eastern side did get a little bit more butchered over on this. They stopped getting supplies delivered to them because that wall cut off their main trading routes. They stopped having luxury foods, comfort clothes, and all around healthcare even be delivered to them between doctors or even just a simple checkup. And no one could do much about it because if either of us, Russia or us, broke past that wall or did something the other one did not like, we could wipe out each other because we both had nuclear power at the time. And of course, with all of this, to this actual date, to today, there is no border, there is no physical possible barrier or a real East Germany or a real West Germany. It is just simply what's left of the war and just simply labels that got left over. And even the mayor themselves of Germany has declared that there is no West Germany or East Germany. Now that we know a little bit more about why there's a split, we're going to go into an overall arcing um, Hofstede graph. I'm sorry for the quality on this one. The best way I could get it here was just to screenshot my computer at the time, and even then it still didn't come out the best of quality. But going into Germany as a whole, even then, Eastern Germany does highly follow this personally too, of this chart. The power distance between man and woman is actually very low. Women work almost just as much as men, and if not, sometimes more than men in Germany. So men hi highly respect women in the workforce and see it as a really powerful move to do, actually. Their individualism is one of the almost highest part on this chart is because when they see you, they want an individual worker, a human being, actually, not just a robot to follow their orders, but someone who can contribute to that possible workforce that they're going here. And now, despite being such a very low um, power rate, power distance between each other, their masculinity actually is really high too. And that's because they are still deeply rooted in tradition of, for example, for when a man walks a woman to on a date, the man will go through the door of either the restaurant or wherever he is taking the woman. So that way the man can scout out a seat for the woman and the man to sit. He will not actually hold the door for her and let her walk in first and a bunch of other things like that that would seem chivalrous for us to do, but they are still deeply rooted in that masculine chivalry. Now, their uncertainty avoidance is also pretty high, and that's due to because they were cut off during the war. They were pretty much, <laughs> in layman's terms, uncertain 24-7 that they weren't going to see the next day, and it still carried a huge weight and effect on them to today. And that is simply just because they didn't know when their next meal could have been sometimes. And now with their long-term orientation actually is even higher. And the highest one on this rate is because, again, during that war, all they had was time to save things. And they all had was a chance. And they always had to keep working to the next thing. And since this happened, they carried this over. And they so always seen themselves as saving for the next big thing or getting ready or working for the next big thing. They always saw a bigger picture compared to what they were doing in that moment. And of course, with their final thing, indulgence, almost being the lowest thing here other than the power distance. And that's because they simply, again, just believe that if you're not happy, it's because you're not working hard enough. And so they don't take time to do the crazy indulging themselves into uh, candy or parties or celebrations of something. Yes, they will, of course, still celebrate, but it's not as highly regarded or as um, more doesn't happen as often as we would personally do or find almost a bit unusual that it doesn't happen as much as we do. Now, moving on more into their deeply rooted culture, 
it did begin or sorry yeah the culture did begin where it all ended when the berlin wall was torn down they started their cultures they actually adopted most of the western culture but did stay firmly rooted with most of their stuff because yeah their people are very stubborn they again had to be during that cold war and it again left a very very obvious um, scar on them because now all they do and now all that they do is in pure stubbornness they are very headstrong people they will not stop until they do get to that overall picture they are looking for and that is also part of because it wasn't pretty for them during the war a little bit extra they had to fight every day for their lives because they were cut off from everything like i've said earlier they did not have that luxury foods and uh, luxury co closing clothing my apologies and since that didn't leave us such a mark on them, they became also very cut off from their emotions. They don't really show them as much as most would expect or as compared to others, they would almost look like they're emotionless. But it's just they're reserved. They're very to themselves until they find someone that they do enjoy talking to and will gladly enjoy talking to them with. But again, still very reserved, even most times with their own family and don't tend to honestly indulge into their family which we'll go on to more right now with involving our course concepts but the huge part of family actually for most of us when a mom has their own kid and everything they would take turns on doing this. be there for their kid and dad would do the same and they would take turns on doing this but an overwhelming weight of women were actually choose when i'm saying sorry 73 percent chose to do a full-time job when they were offered a chance to take leave they chose to go for the full-time job and keep working while their kid was at home or being babysat or in daycare, which did cause a little bit of that disconnection of a family orientation. And it did stop a lot of bonding between mother and child and father and child begin because they were working full-time. They wanted that big picture. They wanted more. They always saw themselves being happier if they could work more because they could pay for more things. And in turn, that was projected onto their kid and their kids grew up like that and health wasn't a real concern for them for a very long time if you broke a body part you either put it back together or you were out of the job and since they saw that happiness came from work and that if you weren't happy it's because you haven't worked hard enough it was a big thing for them just to not go to doctors and when they did it was a scary thing so of course you would want to avoid what you fear most and that's not being happy and that's being told that you can't work by a doctor and since they again once with this last bullet point here they did truly believe that if you weren't happy it was because you didn't work hard enough there was no ifs there was no buts there was no arguing because since that war left a scar on them they just saw that as a chance of okay well we didn't do something right that means we didn't work hard enough and if we didn't eat we had to blame ourselves because we just didn't work for our meal that night so with all this in conclusion of their culture, of them being very headstrong, stubborn, set in their ways, even then with a low power distance between each other, and overall still very just happy people, they're just not very expressive of their emotions and everything. The overall culture is a very, very, I'm trying to find the word here. Uh, there was a very, what's the proper word? I'm sorry, I'm forgetting the word now, and I've practiced this five times. It, they're very concrete together. They're very commun community oriented. There we go. That, that's that's what I'm trying to get at. They're very happy with each other in their own world. They're very happy doing their own thing. And they don't really like expressing it. They don't know how to sometimes. And that's just because that's how they were growing up. And for other people too, it's a lot of simple things in life meant the greatest things for them. All the way to a piece of candy. People would see that thing as such a luxury that it would be very little indulged on because they wanted a bigger picture. They wanted even better than what they could have been offered right there and then. So next time you see that piece of candy or you see that simple little thing that you might just take for granted, maybe think to someone or maybe think for a moment that to someone else, that small little thing is a really big thing in their world. Thank you.